Uh, welcome to our audience. Uh, IFLA is very happy to introduce you Sandra Hoferlichter, uh, who is a very famous expert in internet governance uh, subject. And uh, we are very happy to introduce her uh, to our librarians. So uh, the goal of our webinar is to uh, inform librarians why internet governance matter, what it is important for uh, our readers and how libraries can be involved in the um, internet governance work. So you know, a pandemic shows us that um, education system has to be changed and has to be more democratized and internet plays very, very important role in all this. Uh, so dear Sandra, uh, I would Uh, dear Sandra, I would be happy to ask you, uh, because we have many librarians who does not know anything at all about internet governance, uh, what it is and uh, why it's important for many countries to be involved in it. Thank you. Thank you, Maya. Um, also, thank you for the nice introduction. Um, I know some of your colleagues from IFLA are pretty much aware what Eurodic is because they have been active contributors to Eurodic in the past. Eurodic is the European Dialogue on Internet Governance, and we are going to organize the 15th meeting this year. It will be the first year after we uh, had two virtual meetings due to the pandemic, and uh, it will be a hybrid meeting in the nice city of Trieste. And I would already like to invite everyone to join us either in person in Trieste or online. Um, why it is important that uh, uh, librarians and uh, the IFLA community is participating in internet governance. <clears throat> I think um, all matters related to media literacy and access to information is uh, among the core goals of uh, librarians and of IFLA. And while this was uh, merely um, uh, limited to print material in the past, we, are, we have to face the new real realities and we are more and more getting into the importance of uh, digital medias. So to say um, when in the past a librarian uh, task was to bring young people uh, to, to literature or to engage older people to discover literature, um, they could now play a vital role in uh, uh, introducing uh, online medias in line with the digital skills that you need to work with them. I think here librarians could really play a, a vital role and in addition also to promote access for everyone, not only in the major hubs and in the global north, but also in the global south and in uh, remote areas, villages, etc. A lot, have been, a lot has been done in the past, um, but I think it needs uh, ongoing efforts and uh, librarians in this regard could play a very important role. Uh, and uh, what are the subjects libraries might be interested in internet governance and erotic? So uh, what might be so, so media literacy, also digital uh, securities, maybe information, uh, so trustful information. Uh, what might be uh, other subjects uh, which uh, can be connected with libraries? Basically, since internet governance is a cross-cutting issue, um, it touches all the, all the points. You mentioned already security, and of course security is an important aspect when we talk about a safer internet for everyone. But also, uh, as I said already, media literacy, it needs some kind of skills to uh, use online medias and uh, to distinguish between fake news and, and real news. This is nothing that comes just as a, as a given. We have to work on it and we have to educate our society to be um, able to, to work with this online media. <clears throat> and also this year, we are discussing things like um, the internet and travel times. We will discuss how important uh, the internet became during the COVID pandemic crisis. 
Now we are just facing the next crisis with the war in Ukraine, and we have to deal with uh, misinformation, with propaganda, and all these things. And I believe that these are topics that the librarians should engage with, because I think they have a lot to contribute from their point of view uh, in uh, Eurodic and in the internet governance discussion as such. Thank you. And I see you have prepared very interesting uh, uh, presentation. Could you share with us some topics of it? Yes, of course, I'm happy to do so. Um, here you can already see the nice uh, picture of Trieste, which is the world's biggest sailing uh, championship, the Barcola. Um, it's not taking place when we are in Trieste, but uh, you will, of course, be able to visit that place. Um, I spoke about already a little bit what Euronic is. It's the European Dialogue on Internet Governance. We are uh, organized under the global IGF, uh, which is convened by the United Nations. We've been created in 2008 by several organizations, government representatives and civil society. And each year we are organizing a conference that takes place in another European city. We've been in many cities in those 15 years, in Georgia, in Serbia, in Sweden, Germany, Portugal, Spain, uh, there are numerous, you will find them on our website. And this year, as said, we are for the first time in Trieste. It's important to know that uh, Eurovic, as well as any other of the IGF initiatives, may they be national, regional, or the global one, they are to place to facilitate a discussion, but not to finalize it. You can't expect decisions coming out of these forums, but you can expect that um, new uh, topics are identified and the way to making decisions is, uh, is paved on during these forums. Um, this is a picture about the Eurotic structure. I just jump about quickly on it. Um, we have two, uh, um, let me call it a butterfly, and there are two wings. One is the association that is responsible for the financial oversight and the long-term planning. But the more important part is the community that shapes the program and uh, that develops Eurotic as such. And all stakeholders are invited to this community. And uh, I would like to reiterate that, of course, the uh, community from librarians is invited here as well. We have a number of institutional partners that are supporting us uh, since our inception in 2008. You will see they are coming from all stakeholder groups, civil society, governments, international organization, but also technical community and the media. This year uh, we are in Trieste and Trieste is well known uh, as a city of science. And uh, it comes not by surprise that uh, the International Center of Theoretical Physics is our host. And funnily, they are the host for three years now because we wanted to go there since 2020. But as I said already, this was not possible due to the pandemic. And um, they stick with us for the three years because they really wanted also Eurodic to happen in, in Trieste. And they are supported by the Sucola Internazionale Superiore di Studi Avanzi. I'm not sure if I pronounced that totally correctly. Our milestones are uh, for 2020, we are already in April and the registration has opened. So um, everyone is free to register. Eurodic is free of charge. We don't charge a participation fee, but we would of course be very thankful if you can donate a little amount um, because our budget is not so stable and uh, it would really help us to move forward. Um, <clears throat> part of our program is a three days youth program. We call it the youth stick, the youth dialogue on internet governance. Um, this will also start with a series of webinars already on Saturday this week on the 30th of April. And um, then the youngsters will arrive three days before Eurovic and they will uh, have uh, face-to-face -face meetings about topics they are interested in, about their privacy, about security, but also about the uh, European focus on internet governance. And on 20th of June, uh, the official Eurodic starts with a day zero, 
and then with the two days of the main program. Um, we usually go via a call for uh, submissions and um, you can see that link here. I can share the presentation later on. If you click on, click on that link, you will get to the uh, proposals that uh, have been submitted this year. And um, just going very quickly about, uh, through them, um, we have various categories and one of them, which is possibly the most important one for librarians and for the EFLA community is access and literacy. And you see that we have uh, received quite numerous uh, proposals on misinformation, on uh, multilingualism, on data algorithms and the promotion of programming. I think these are all issues that uh, could be very well interesting for EFLA uh, communities. Then we have proposals on uh, development of the internet governance system. Uh, <clears throat> also here, an internet of public service. I guess this is a proposal that is interesting for, for you. Um, we have a category on human rights and data protection where we discuss artificial intelligence, but also self-sovereignty, the Internet of Things, all this under the framework of human rights and data protection. We will also discuss innovation and economic issues with regard to competition, sustainability, and new innovations. And media and content is another important category. Um, uh, we have, uh, when I show the program, you will see that we have quite a track dedicated to platform, social media regulation, and local media initiatives. Security and crime is another one. And technical and operational issues uh, is the last category. Um, we will go to four focus areas. Um, we, or we define four focus areas out of this proposal, which are digital sovereignty, uh, is Europe going in the right direction to keep the internet safe and open? The second is a reality check. Do we implement effective regulation and set the right standards to solve the problems of the future? Then uh, uh, a topic coming next, outlook on new technologies and the question, can existing governance bodies cope with them? And last but not least, the battle of value system, how the internet is impacted by geopolitical problems. And uh, this was it with my presentation. I stop here, presentation, but um, I will go later on to the program. Uh, but I would first give back the floor to Maya if she has any questions to me that I can clarify. Yes, I have uh, some questions, of course. Uh, first of all, I have to mention that uh, every day can the Internet Governance Forum is a real delight to, uh, for participants because it's one of the most democratic institutions, I, I, I think. And therefore, we are always happy uh, to be a member of it. Um, what uh, I'm interested in, um, what are the results in the educational sector uh, during uh, former years? So step by step, what was your result and recommendation in the field of education, because education is very connected to libraries and the civil service. And in this context, uh, uh, could you introduce some results and recommendations? Because uh, maybe some libraries don't know that it was as a result of internet governance of, and uh, erotic, uh, what they have now in this field. And it would be really good to know. I know that, uh, for example, Swiss has uh, some really good experience with internet governance, all the Swiss libraries. Uh, and uh, could you tell us about this, please? Um, I... Apologies, before I let Sandra answer the question, I would like to ask just our participants in the meanwhile, if they have any questions, to pose these questions in the Q&A box. Thank you so much. Yeah, Sandra, you may go ahead. Thank you, uh, Despina. Uh, Maya, can I ask you for clarification? Are you interested in what kind of educational efforts we are undertaking? Yes, yes. And what was the, what, what was your recommendations, which is uh, already implemented in uh, um, different countries? 
And uh, what can be done in this direction in the future? because libraries are connected to the education and to the civil service and any changes and any new recommendations in education also impact the libraries so i just try to connect these three fields education civil service and libraries and what is your experience I know that you have really good experience in it and uh, really good expertise and uh, everything and uh, internet governance is one of the democratic uh, institution. We are always happy to be member of it, but uh, I suppose many people don't know it and it will be good. Thank you. Okay, okay. Um, thank you for that question. Um, since this has many aspects, please allow me to share my screen again because then I would uh, point you to a source that is possibly uh, very useful for librarians. Um, the ba <clears throat> basically, the recommendations that you are asking for are not made by Euridic as an organization, but they are made by the community that is organizing the sessions. And uh, in the past, IFLA had been organizing session on topics related to their uh, community as well. And all this information is uh, basically uh, uh, summarized in our wiki. And let me ask you, can you see the wiki? Okay. Yes, we can. Super. You will see that if I put in the, in the search uh, section over here, if I put in IFLA and press enter, you will see a number of sessions where IFLA had been already involved. For instance, the right to be forgotten in 2017 or the EU copyright reform, IFLA was involved as well. Um, stepping to realizing equal access for all in 2015. So you can see this goes back even here, 2014, European copyright in the digital age. Um, these were 2013, even here, uh, digital participation and democracy for all. Uh, I think it shouldn't be me uh, uh, giving you a, a recommendation or giving you a lecture, but I would encourage librarians and everyone uh, who is interested in checking those, um, checking the wiki. And I will also put the URL in the chat so that you can. So I, I put that uh, link of the wiki uh, already in the chat, the one with the consolidated program, if that's correct. That's correct. And okay, uh, from there you can, you can find your way. Because um, what I would like to, um, to show you is that for each of the session that you can find here in, in all those years, you will see messages and recommendations. And, um, and also further reading material. And uh, those messages and recommendations are basically the educational part of, of Eurodic. So whatever you are interested in from all these topics, um, you can find all this in our wiki, which is to a great extent the archive of what has been done in all respects. But uh, it is also the collaboration platform for uh, the actual year. And here I go back to the program of this year. And uh, you will see that uh, there's again a rich program with the core focus area that I mentioned already. And then when you are interested in one of the topics or subtopics, you just click on them and you will find a sub page. And on this sub page, everyone can subscribe to a mailing list, which is this link here under get involved. There is a mailing list. And by simply subscribing to the mailing list, you can become part of the org team. And then uh, everyone, honestly, everyone is invited to become part of the org team and help us shaping the messages that are to a certain extent also educational uh, for this year's Eurodic. Um, you will find those mailing lists and those pages for all the program points. And we are just about to start the session planning. So it would be the right time to uh, get engaged now and subscribe to any of the topics that anyone would be interested in. And with regard to the educational aspect, let me also add that uh, we have the youth stick, I mentioned it already. 
Well, it is too late now to apply for USDIC because the list of candidates is, is almost finished, but um, <clears throat> you will find here the, the USDIC program and all this information that we are going to uh, discuss this year. Um, we uh, start with this webinar, as I mentioned already, Introduction to Internet Governance um, uh, and how to draft the use messages, but then we continue with uh, data protection and data governance, disinformation, implementation of human rights, digital literacy and access, artificial and general intelligence and environmental sustainability. And then when people, uh, when use diggers meet in Trieste, um, they will continue with the sessions in person and then they will draft use messages. And uh, I think this is also very important. And uh, for instance, if uh, librarians could help uh, distributing those messages in particular the use messages to their audience because ma many times these are young people that would be really a great cooperation and we could start from, from there. And Maya, I hope this answered your question. If not, then please uh, let me know. Um, I have a question, of course. I, I got now uh, a good idea. Uh, I see there is a really, a really big source about um, everybody can internet governance, but uh, almost no library has links to your information. So I suppose it might be a really good idea that uh, on every library page, there will be a link to internet governance and Eurodic. So the librarians by themselves can uh, get familiar with this knowledge. Uh, what do you think? Can we do such a uh, thing? Also, can we promote uh, Eurodic and uh, internet uh, governance through our websites in libraries? Absolutely, I would be very delighted. And let me underline, Eurodic belongs to the European community. So uh, everyone can use it as a platform and everyone can get involved. And if you would like to link to this source of the wiki, for instance, but of course you can also link to our website. But I think the wiki is the more interesting place because here you can find the results from all the recent years. So uh, we would be very happy uh, if we can build a stronger cooperation in this regard. And then maybe in particular, um, build something around media content and access and literacy. That would be very much welcome. Thank you. Uh, uh, Maya, uh, excuse me, we have also a question from an attendee. Yes. So the question is an interesting one. It says, what do you think small libraries can do in order to keep internet safe and open? <laughs> That's a good question. Possibly the library can uh, not uh, do much to keep the internet safe and open, but uh, to uh, prevent their uh, customers or their audience from uh, uh, getting harmed by insecure websites or uh, these kind of things. So I think education and um, media literacy efforts are the most important uh, field where library libraries can become active in, in, in this field. And if the users, if the end user uh, moves and navigates through the internet in an informed and safe manner, then the internet as such becomes more safe and open for everyone. Thank you. I know that uh, you are the main participant of uh, the big internet governance. Can you share some information about internet governance? And um, so uh, are the topics almost uh, any time the same or internet governance uh, represents another topic? So for libraries, for example, or not only for libraries, for use and for other stakeholders. Um, internet governance is the overall uh, covering issue and it's, as I said already, it's a cross-cutting uh, topic, but under this uh, internet governance, in order to make it a little bit more easy to understand and to cluster it, we have introduced those categories that I mentioned already, access literacy, development of the IG ecosystem, human rights, media content, and so on and so forth. So um, when you, for instance, click on the category access and literacy in our program, 
you will find uh, the sessions that are relevant uh, from from last year in this respect. Um, you would you can do this for for every year, and that will help uh, individuals to navigate to the information that is uh, relevant for them uh, when accessing internet governance. As I said, internet governance is such a broad topic. Um, not everyone is interested in all the details. Some people have a focus on human rights, others on sustainability, others on the business sector. Um, Eurodic is basically the forum where all these stakeholders come together and uh, can exchange and discuss their different views. Um, <clears throat> but it, it's really up to the individual to pick and check the topics that are relevant for for each individual and uh, to get involved with uh, those topics. Uh, what I see now, uh, the subject of sustainability and human rights, especially during pandemic and uh, during the Ukrainian war, um, is uh, very important. Um, how do you think how libraries might be involved uh, with uh, internet governance um, for this topic, sustainability and human rights? Um, I, since you mentioned uh, COVID and uh, the geopolitical conflict in Ukraine or the war in Ukraine, let's be blunt about it. Um, I would suggest um, that you uh, check what is happening under focus area four. We have two subtopics there. One is responding to disinformation in times of COVID and geopolitical conflicts. And the other one is uh, on the way to Splinternet. Splinternet, that means that the internet is splitting up into different national and whatsoever sections. Um, I think these are the topics that are possibly most interesting in this year's program for librarians. And um, I would encourage everyone to subscribe to one of the mailing lists in order to get involved in this discussion. Um, you see that there are two related workshops, which at the moment are blank. These uh, can be hot topic discussions. And if there is a good proposal from the librarian community, we might dedicate one of those workshops to the librarians. Also, what I believe is very interesting for librarians is uh, on day zero, a session about multilingualism on the internet. Um, this uh, workshop will be organized by UNESCO. And I believe this is uh, also very something that this is something very uh, close to what uh, librarians are uh, related to. And of course, all the other uh, sessions about uh, you see here, human rights is dealt with uh, in, in, in respect to the Artificial Intelligence Act and Data Governance Act. Um, these are also topics where I think um, librarians can contribute quite a lot. Um, I would like to ask also educational opportunities. Uh, do you have any courses uh, except uh, Everdeek and Internet Governance Forum uh, where people can go and study the whole Internet Governance and Everdeek subject also? <laughs> Um, I, I must be curious now because now I'm wearing two hats. First is my head as the Secretary General of uh, the European Dialogue, but then um, taking off that hat and uh, showing you another uh, initiative, which is the European Summer School on Internet Governance. The similarity in names goes back to, um, to the early days when both initiatives were founded around the same time. And okay. uh, here it is still possible to participate in the call for application, which is still open. Can, by the way, can you see this website, uh, your SSIG or? Yes, we do. Okay. Yes. You can also share the link in, uh, in, our, uh, in, in the chat, which is your SSIG.eu. And uh, here basically you can uh, learn about the basic uh, issues about internet governance I'm referring to last year's program. There is a webinar about uh, the history on internet governance, but then we will also discuss internet governance and geostrategic policy, technical regulation, security, crime, and human rights. We will also look in the business uh, section of internet governance and the future challenges. 
This is a week-long course and uh, also here everyone, not only Europeans, we have participants from across the world are invited to take part and <clears throat> application is still possible until uh, end of May. So that could be possibly something uh, for interested parties to learn about internet governance. But as said, the similarity in names is the only thing, uh, and the similarity in topic, of course, is the only similarity here. These are two different organizations. I'm, for historical reasons, uh, I'm involved in both. And um, uh, um, we're wearing in this respect two heads. But now I'm taking off my head again as Secretary General of Euronic. This was yeah. just a, a little excursion into another project. Uh, Maria, may, may, I, may I ask also something here? <laughs> uh, so these are really interesting projects. Uh, I just want to, ma to make clear these days, you need to make clear. So the both the summer school and the workshops you mentioned before and the, uh, are both physical events. They're not hybrid at all. Is that correct? Just because these days, you know, we need to, to mention. Yes, that's that's a good question. The Eurodic will be a hybrid meeting, so everyone can participate in all the sessions online. The summer school is a is a physical event only. So we bring in some high level speakers uh, with a, an online speech, but the summer school from the concept is is not an, an, an event that you should do in a hybrid form because the benefit of this event is not just knowledge transfer, but also the, the network that you build, the inter, uh, informal discussion that you have beside the lectures, which is different for Eurodic. One is knowledge transfer, which is the summer school, but the other one, Eurodic, is more um, of a dialogue. Here we need to, to exchange views, and uh, at the summer school, it's knowledge transfer. Of course, also to a certain extent, exchanging views, but it's more like a school and the other one is a conference, let's put it that way. Perfect, thank you so much. Uh, thank you. And uh, uh, I have one personal question for, because it's also interesting. How you got involved in internet governance also? How you choose this profession? <laughs> That is a good question, Maya, and I would like to cast this with you in, in, in private. Basically, by profession, I'm an architect. Um, and I was indeed reconstructing physical buildings in my hometown in Leipzig. And uh, I worked for like 10 years as an architect um, being self-employed. And then it happened that I met a person in my life, which was, which is nowadays my father-in-law at that time. Uh, <laughs> and he was uh, active in the internet governance field and he just needed help with the conference and said, can you help me? And funnily, these two initiatives were, first of all, the Eurodic and secondly, the summer school. Well, the summer school was first and the Eurodic came later. And I became only involved by helping out with the registration, with updating the website and these kind of things. And since I was self-employed, I had all freedom to do so. And then this became more and more and more, and I got really pulled into this topic of internet governance and see, um, 17 years later, I'm still there and I'm still doing both and a lot of other things. But this basically shows that uh, honestly, everyone who is interested in uh, our digital future can get involved into internet governance and can even make a professional let's call it career here. So this is really something I would like to encourage everyone. If an architect can do it, then everyone can do it. Actually, it is really interesting because you were architect for physical buildings, but it is the same. It is the architecture also. Architecture of the space and of the digital knowledge. It's it's, it's something of the same subject, also um, theoretically. Um, so I have one question about internet rights. Uh, we see in Russia now that internet freedom is threatened. And I'm really interested.
asking uh, what does erotic or internet governance uh, to rise voice against internet um, also, um, for the internet freedom? Uh, what is um, some steps to do this? Hmm. Um, I cannot uh, foresee how the discussion will go at Eurodic, but um, again, I would like to point you to focus area four, internet and travel times. Uh, we can expect that during this session on the way to Splinternet and responding to this information and geopolitical troubles, this, uh, these are the sessions that will exactly deal with those issues. And uh, uh, I mean, we had those discussion in the past to a certain extent as well. But with uh, the situation that we are facing now in Europe, we see that this becomes more and more urgent to discuss about it and possibly to um, give recommendations how to deal with it. And uh, these recommendations will come out of this year's Eurodic. And whoever would like to contribute, please join the op teams. I have one philosophical question also. Uh, many experts uh, tell that now we have middle age of the internet, also dark ages of the internet. So it means that we, uh, people need more education and more, more involvement in this. How you imagine the best uh, epoch of the internet? The, the best it's the best time of the internet so when uh, some uh, theoretical say that we have now dark ages of the internet just beginning of the internet knowledge how you imagine good times of mm, in the future because people uh, are uh, somehow involved in pandemics involved in this world situation and they forget to think about future and uh, what future holds in this time so in your profession, how you see the good uh, future? How mm -hmm. can you imagine when you are thinking? What yeah. is your motivation in this? Um, this is going to be a little bit of a broad answer I'm going to give now. Um, I used to compare the invention of the internet with the invention of uh, automobiles, cars, basically. Um, this was also done uh, at the end of the 19th century. And it was a new technology that totally changed the life of the people because from uh, with, with the invention of the cars, the radius where one could uh, explore its environment became bigger and bigger. People got mobile and so on and so forth. And there was a lot of uh, fear at the beginning that uh, this mobility could do a lot of harm to, to the society. It could be loud, it could be dangerous, <laughs> It could pollute the environment. It could kill people. These, these were all fears at the beginning of this technology. And looking back now at uh, more than 10 years of uh, mobility, this all happened. The environment got polluted. It is loud on our and noisy on our streets. People are killed in accidents. And uh, we have a lot of traffic jam. And um, about 30 years later or 20, 20, 30 years later, after the invention of uh, cars and uh, motor vehicles, um, the first regulation uh, on uh, traffic was made. And guess where it was made in Germany? Because we <laughs> like to regulate. So, um, and this is the moment where we are now. We are now discussing the regulation of the internet. And we are also around 20, 30 years after the invention of the internet. And I think it is time to discuss uh, how or what kind of rules do we want to apply in order to uh, use jointly the digital space. And I, I, I think this is a very nice analogy. And while there have been mistakes made in the uh, car industry or in, in mobility and traffic, there will be mistakes and misdevelopment be made in the internet governance or in our digital future. We cannot prevent this. But we have to react and we have to constantly stay in, uh, in dialogue about this, how we are going to solve the problems that are existing now and that are coming up, but we don't know what are the upcoming problems at the moment. We have an idea what the, about the problems of the future right now, but uh, we, are, we, we possibly can, or I'm, I'm sure we cannot foresee what the problems are we are going to discuss within 10 years. Let me give you an example here. Um, when we started with Eurodic, 
internet governance was a merely technical issue with some political impact, but limited. And uh, po politicians and governments were told by the technical community, stay out of this business, you have nothing to deal with it. And at the beginning, when the internet started, governments and uh, politicians were indeed not involved in the discussions. They did not pay the attention. Some of them didn't even take it serious that the internet is going to be to stay. These times, around 15 years later, internet governance is a highly political issue with technical implications. And those two uh, foras or those two uh, spheres have to be bridged and you only can bridge them if you get a mutual understanding for each other. And that's why uh, initiatives like Eurodic are existing in order to offer that space for discussion. Not only by involving the governments and the technical uh, community, but also the civil society, uh, international organizations, the business, of course, and also people that uh, are looking into the security. Uh, I have to add the positive note that in spite of the fact that these techniques, all these techniques really caused some harm, uh, we have really to remember that it prolonged the longevity of the humanity. So people after the Second World War live now 20 years longer and 30 years longer. So I suppose all these techniques also prolong the lives and save the lives. So I will be very happy if uh, this idea will also work and um, internet governance and uh, this new age will help people to be healthy and happy, of course, uh, because um, I am a real optimist in spite of this. And I believe that um, other um, universe always uh, promotes uh, progress and development. So I hope it will work. Thank you very much, Sandra. And this Pina, do we have any other questions? Not at this moment. If there are any more questions, we ask participants to post them in the Q&A box, but for now we have no questions. Thank you so much, Sandra. That was wonderful. Yeah. And, uh, Sandra, maybe you have a question to us, <laughs> so we are happy to answer you. Um, I have uh, Yes, I have a question and a comment on your uh, hope that the uh, internet will help us to prolong our life. Indeed, there will be a session on day zero, Dynamic Coalition on Data-Driven Health Technologies. So maybe, Maya, that's uh, in particular interesting for you. <laughs> and um, my, my question would be, um, first of all, if, um, and, and, and this we don't have to answer now, but um, I would be uh, happy if I receive requests from the Liberian and IFLA community. Uh, um, if you would like to get involved in this year's Eurodic, so then I would encourage you to contact the Eurodic Secretariat under office at eurodic.org. You will find us uh, also on the website. And um, then I would like to point you to um, publications that we've made uh, already. And I am wondering if Ifla would like to become the chairman or the patronage of the next publication. You remember the, the, um, the categories that we had for our uh, program, media and content, security, internet governance. So we have three publications already that are looking back on the development of uh, internet governance in this respective category. And we are now looking for someone uh, who is doing the publication for the category access and literacy. And I could not think of a better organization than IFLA or librarians to go through the archives of Eurodic, check what has been discussed in the past and make uh, one of those uh, uh, publication for this category. This is something also for you to think about. I would believe that could be a very fruitful cooperation, give you also some uh, visibility and uh, our aim is to have uh, one publication for, for all the categories that I have uh, shown already. Here they are again uh, in, these, in these color codes. So we have out of the seven categories, we have three publications and we would like to look back 
for a decade of development, uh, also for access and literacy. So that would be my two questions, not to be answered now, but uh, maybe in the near future. Well, uh, if I may answer to the last one, uh, that, would, that is a really exciting um, suggestion, Sandra. Um, and this is something we'll definitely look at. Um, this is what I can say for now. Um, so yeah, we just need to see internally how, how we will go about this. Uh, yes, but this sounds uh, something that IFLA would be really excited to do, um, just to say for now. And thank you for the suggestion. You're welcome. And dear Sandra, I have also um, one idea. What if um, uh, some interesting libraries translate our webinar and they can share it with their native uh, librarians? So also, <laughs> I will know that your work uh, has really good results and I'm also going to translate it and share it to Georgian librarians. And uh, about participation, uh, we are, uh, I am participating in the Eurodig and we are presenting our project for uh, sustainable development and also um, uh, coding, uh, basic coding uh, lessons for our readers, for women readers. So it will be two subjects, gender issue and also internet education issue. Mm -hmm. And I, we are going to participate because I really, really love spirit of the Eurotic Internet Governance Forum. It's so free all time and everybody is really happy. So I would recommend as a librarians to take part in it and to enjoy this uh, spirit. Because it it teaches by itself to us also some better working environments. Uh, thank you very much. We really appreciate your time, and uh, I have to really to admit that we listened uh, to many new subjects and topics. In spite of the fact we all use internet, there are many subjects which we don't know yet. And uh, thank you very much, and uh, I wish you very very happy. Eurodic uh, 2022 and uh, hope to see you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for giving me that opportunity and I also hope to see you hopefully in person but at least uh, virtually over the screen. Yes, and I hope it will be uh, mutually very beneficial because we have uh, now two new ideas. And thank you very much to IFLA for this opportunity to introduce you to our librarians. Bye. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a nice day. Yes. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.